Cancel Joe Nami. Cancel Joe Nami. We are doing a podcast here. Um, got some stuff, stuff to talk about what's happening. People are watching the World Cup. And uh, this is a funny story. My, I went downstairs and my dad was watching the World Cup because he's from uh, the Middle East. And uh, that's really all they have. They have the World Cup and war. So anyways, he's watching the World Cup. And I noticed after about 10 minutes of watching with him, it was the Netherlands versus Senegal. Why? I don't know. I don't even know why they let those two countries in. But uh, <laughs> but he's watching, and then they do a replay. The ref gives him a yellow card, and I notice that the characters are kind of like very animatronic. And I go, Dad, is that is that CGI? And he goes, No, no, it's not. You know, he's smoking. He's retarded. Um, <laughs> and I go in my head, I go, I think that's fucking CGI. And then I text my girlfriend, who's also watching in the room. And we realized that for the last hour, my father has been watching a YouTube live stream of someone playing FIFA uh, from their home. And my dad thought that this was the World Cup, just streaming live for free, uh, which was fucking hilarious that he could. I mean, the graphics are pretty good nowadays on the whatever the fuck it is, PS5 or Xbox One my anus, uh, Super Nintendo, but, uh, yeah, yeah, so he was just watching probably some tween just playing FIFA from whatever, his low-income housing in Qatar, which, by the way, Qatar, if you don't know, is the country where a lot of the World Cup is taking place, and Qatar is a country in the Middle East. I believe it's next to Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. I could be one country off. I have a cousin, actually, that lives in Qatar. And, uh, oh, this is kind of funny. If you live in the country of Qatar, if you want to drink alcohol, you've got to get a written, signed note from your boss or your employer to, get, to go and purchase the alcohol. Uh, they're a little Muslim. <laughs> Little bit, you know, the women still wear a COVID mask plus forehead mask. Um, I think it's called, uh, oh, fuck, I'm having a, I'm having a Muslim fart. Uh, but anyways, uh, you know what, you know what they're called, burqa or fucking Balenciaga, which, oh, we'll get to them. There's interest. But anyways, in Qatar, it's where a lot of the World Cup the people, thousand, I guess a few thousand people that were building the stadium in Qatar where the World Cup, a few thousand people died uh, from, it was kind of like when they built the Great Wall of China um, using Mexicans. No, I'm kidding. Uh, of course, it was Japanese. Um, but anyways, uh, although though the Chinese did help us build the railroad from the east to the west coast of the United States, so... Thank you, China. Um, they were, uh, but a lot of them died too, unfortunately, because they were using um, explosives. They were using dynamite, uh, sodium nitrate. I can't remember. One of the nitrates. I mean, TNT is short for a larger chemical name, like PCP or something. But anyways, they would uh, blow up. Because to get the railroad through a lot of these mountainsides in Utah, Nevada, California, they'd have to blow up these mountains to clear a path for the railroad. And um, I guess sometimes there were Chinese people there uh, when the explosives were happening, which is really unfortunate. Um, but, you know, that's, I mean, what are you going to do? You need a rail, you need a choo choo train. Um, but. My heart goes out to the Chinese and the Chinese president Zhu, 
I don't know, his shoe, President Shu. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people died in Qatar building that uh, World Cup soccer stadium. And so now people are upset, you know, activists. And I, you know, I, I can't blame them. I can't blame them for being an activist. But, uh, but uh, yeah, soccer's got to happen, man. I mean, or football. I mean, football is the correct name. But uh, in America, we play football with our hands, and somehow that makes sense. Um, American football players keep getting CTE, that concussion uh, sort of condition. I don't know. I can't remember what it stands for. Con concussion, traumatic experiences, or just childhood. But uh, then a lot of these football players end up committing acts of violence later in their life, which is interesting, you know, and there seems to be some correlation between CTE from playing football and then a lot of violence later on, which is fun. Like I personally, uh, like Aaron Hernandez from the Patriots violence, Ray Rice, uh, you know, most football players are known for either domestic violence or just outright murder. Um, not, they don't always murder their spouses, but you know, sometimes they keep it within the family. But, uh, I also think, you know, we're, we're going a little too harsh on, if you remember OJ Simpson, the guy's a victim. All right. The guy's a victim of CTE from concussive traumatic damage. And yet we're like, Oh, OJ's evil. OJ's bad, you know, but I mean, the guy's got a, a, an illness, a disease, and society just wants to just rail on him just because he killed his wife and um, her friend Ron Goldman, you know, uh, who was giving it to her. Um, but anyways, back to Qatar. Uh, I think O.J. Simpson should be uh, involved in... Uh, he used to be an, an announcer for the NFL, if you don't remember. And he also did commercials for Hertz Rental Car Company. That was kind of a that was kind of a peak of Hertz's professional image. <laughs> but um, yeah, so people are pissed about Qatar. By the way, it gets 126 degrees Fahrenheit in Qatar, and uh, so yeah, sometimes people die when they build stadiums, you know. But I mean. If you want to make an omelet, sometimes you got to crack a couple of eggs, you know. It's also kind of interesting. Um, there were a couple soccer games, uh, USA versus England, or as I like to call it, the rematch of the Revolutionary War. Uh, if you remember that war, if you're an American or if you're England, if you're watching this from the UK, I'm sorry. Uh, this land belongs to you or the Native Americans, one of the two. You know, it's interesting, too, the war, the fucking 1776 war, was it justified? I like to go on Twitter and I like to tell people that it, I like to just say that it wasn't justified and then watch people get real angry uh, because it's fun. Um, but then I started Googling it and looking into this war and it was just over taxes. It was over the, the Stamp Act of 1765. Sugar, they were taxing sugar, stamps, and then maybe WhatsApp messages. Now, there was something else. But anyway, so, and then every, all the colonists were like, you yeah, fuck, we're not paying those fucking taxes, man. Are you kidding me? Oh, it was tea. Did I say tea? I can't remember. I'm on a lot of medication. Where's my medication? So... I'm a kind of a retarded, uh, intelligent person, but anyway, so they were, f they were, it was fought over taxes, but it, you know, it's not like it was in self-defense. So I like to go on Twitter and joke that it's not a justified war because the only justified war is a war that's in self-defense, you know, like, uh, when we went to Iraq <laughs> and defended ourselves, um, Personally, I'm, I'm proud of what we did in Iraq, though. Uh, we left a legacy there, <laughs> all right? We left a goddamn legacy. We set up a, a democratic uh, leader, 
some kind of fun puppet government. You know, that's always fun. But, uh, yeah, so the war, the Revolutionary War was actually fought over taxes, and then there was a little massacre, and then, like, some some red coats and then some colonists were like, f- you fucking your mom. And then they started shooting at each other and it was called like the Boston massacre. And then that's what started off the whole fucking war and shit. And then King George, I don't know if queen Elizabeth, somebody was like, they committed ah, martial law And then they started fighting. But anyways, this past week, last Sunday, was the rematch of the Revolutionary War in soccer. You know what I mean? And the U.S. tied England, which was actually impressive. Um, But, like, is there really a difference? You know what I mean? If you think about it, like, why are we fighting wars with guns? Is there really a difference if we were to set up? soccer games you know what i mean or or whatever fucking sport you want to play like war is war not a game with certain rules you know if you think about it the treaty of versailles there are uh what is it crimes of war acts of war torture uh using uh gas technology like who was it that used gas uh, weapons on his own people. It was, uh, the fucking, ah, fucking Iran. It was a, some Saudi dictator. I don't know why my brain's all fucked up, but, uh, you know, so there are certain rules in war anyways, and why not? I mean, in the future, we might be fighting wars with AI or with drones, but it's like, why not just play it over a fucking soccer game? And then, you know, should Russia and Ukraine, should they be solving this, oh, you know, on the soccer field? I mean, people are already dying on the soccer field or in the, you know, when soccer fields are getting built. Um, so it's like, what's the fucking difference? I think Russia and them should be solving it this way and Ukraine, which I think they're still fighting. I don't know. They're in season two of Russia versus Ukraine. Aside from that, the U.S. also played Iran, our besties, Iran, where if you remember, women are rioting, women and men, people over wearing the hijab. Yeah, baby, go get yourself a hijab if you're unemployed. Um, But uh, it's kind of funny that Iran... Iran lost pretty bad. They also played England and they lost 6-0. I'm not even a big soccer guy. I just think it's funny that all these countries that are committing international and ethical crimes, you know, um, crimes of passion. Uh, Iran still manages to find time to play soccer. I mean, you got to hand it to them, you know. People are rioting, flipping cars, burning the goddamn country down. And they're like, yeah, but (laughs) we got to go play soccer. So they sent 12 guys out to play soccer. Uh, None of them have to wear hijabs or burqas, though, um, because they're men. (laughs) That's a privilege. That is their brown privilege. Their white brown privilege. Um, Iran lost really bad, like I said, 6-0 to England. I think they I think they just they need to focus on the on the sports, you know? They get their head in the game. They're they're probably too distracted over all these politics. Um, you know, all these riots. The president of Iran, I think he's actually called like the chief Muslim caliphate dictator, somebody lord of Iran. Uh, he's got a big hijab type thing. It's no, it's a turban type of thing. Who knows? Who knows why he hides snacks in it or something. But anyways, he, he's not running the country so well. And a lot of people are revolting and protesting over TikTok, which isn't really allowed in Iran. Um, what else we got? We got a fun story. I guess this is the story of the week in the last week. If you haven't heard, this is a big story. Actually, the fashion country, I don't wear fashion clearly, but Balenciaga. Okay. They're a big fashion company for you twats out there that dress like me. 
uh, they they don't make deals on Cyber Monday or Black Friday. Balenciaga is like, I don't know, Dolce or Gabbana or something. But anyways, Kanye and the fucking Kardashian ho uh, wears them and listens to them. But the reason they got in trouble is because they were using children in their ads. They were uploading photos to Instagram of children with Balen Balenciaga products, like teddy bears wearing BDSM chains and all kinds of like sexual paraphernalia. And at first I was like, all right, who gives a shit if the teddy bears wearing a chain or some fish netting, like whatever, fuck it. You know, there's kinky children out there, I'm sure. Uh, but then the deeper I started digging, I realized that they have some weirder shit going on. Like in one of the Instagram posts, there's a Balenciaga purse. And then underneath it, I swear to God, is the court case, 2008 Supreme Court case paperwork of U.S. versus Michael Williams, which is basically this guy who was arguing for pedophilia. And under the right of free speech, he could solicit for uh, porno pornographic underage. And like, if the further you start pulling the thread on this whole Balenciaga thing, there's like this eyes wide shut, like children fetish. I mean, this shit is getting weird, man. Like this shit, like just saying this stuff could get me demonetized, um, which whatever, I don't care. There's teddy bears. Balenciaga has teddy bears with blood stains on it. I mean, they're like trying to go with this like dark theme. And uh, it's real fucked up. They're like, they're taking pictures of like children with empty wine glasses and like uh, caution tape around them. And like, there's like crayon drawings of like demonic presence um, behind the kids. Like, and. Uh, this is fun. This is fun when Corb and then Balenciaga comes out and they're trying to apologize for all this like demonic child pornography, which like, you know, good for them for getting ahead of the story and trying to apologize. But, uh, you know, they made some uh, large errors in judgment, let's say. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that, you know, I get, I think I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to be like abrasive and edgy and, uh, uh, like they, they wanted to flip ideas and conventions, but, uh, they just ended up coming off as pedophiles, you know? And I mean, it's one thing if you're in comedy and you're going to joke about, uh, this kind of stuff, but it's another thing when you're a fashion company and you've got children prancing around in your fucking fishnets and, um, and then, uh, God, I hate bringing up her name. I don't even want to give her the time of day, but she really fucked up. The, the Kim Kardashian, the person that might single-handedly be ruining uh, the American intellect, the zeitgeist of, you know, there used to be this uh, graffiti artist in L.A. that I loved his work. He would just spray paint this stencil of, like, just stop making stupid people famous. And uh, is there a better quote? Is I, That should be, I hope someone graffitis that on Kim Kardashian's grave. Uh, stop making stupid people famous. I think, you know, and I don't know. Apparently she studied to become a lawyer and she's trying to do something positive. But like, God, her kids are going to be so fucked. But anyway, she came out and she said, I'm reevaluating my relationship with Balenciaga, and they seem to be um, recognizing that they made a massive error instead of coming out and just saying that she's cutting ties with them. And, uh, you know, I don't know. This whole situation's got real Nambla vibes. If you remember Nambla from, uh, mostly from South Park, for God's sakes, National Man-Boy Love Association. Uh, I believe they contributed a lot of money to uh, Joe Biden's uh, campaign fund. Joe Biden, um, some people call him Sleepy Joe or 
or sniff sniffy Joe because uh, he likes to sniff people's hair. But uh, he's a real the guy's a real piece of work. Uh, I love Joe Biden though. He's a uh, constant, constantly entertaining. And uh, what else? Oh, there was there was something else that was interesting. There was caution tape in one of these Instagram posts. And the caution tape, instead of saying Balenciaga, it said B-A-A-L or Baal, which is the name of, it's like an ancient name for Satan. <laughs> and, uh, you know, or another name for Satan is like Beelzebub, Baal, Balthazar. There's like all these, you can correct me in the comments, but there was a lot of satanic suggestion and like. I don't know, man. I don't know what the creative director at, over at Balenciaga is thinking. You know, they're all playing their like corporate apology, like, "Well, we believe we made, we had a creative in uh, misfire, blah blah blah." We were trying to push boundaries, and yeah, they were trying to push boundaries uh, on these children's assholes. Um, I'll remind you. Currently, this podcast is called Cancel Joe Nami. But uh, I've never been, um, never been big on pedophilia. Love to joke about it. Um, but uh, Balenciaga likes to commit it. Go figure. Oh man, what a story! Oh Kanye West, I guess I'll just mention him briefly. Uh, I've been saying for I stopped listening to his music in 2015 because uh, he's an idiot. Uh, before that, I did listen to some of his music, and people kept defending him, you know, like, he had the whole controversy with South Park, South Park made fun of him, something about a fish stick, they had a whole episode where Kanye was confused about a fish stick, and, um, Kanye likes Balenciaga a lot, but they dropped him after he had the anti-Semitic tweet. Kanye is clearly just mentally ill, though, and people are calling him anti-Semitic. I don't know. Maybe he is. But if you're against the Jews, then are you mentally ill? I guess so. I mean, you could look at what Hitler did and argue that that was... I mean, Hitler was mentally ill. He, uh, he was on a lot of meth. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but when he showed up to the 19... 34 Olympics. It was, I believe it was held in Berlin. American, African, <laughs> black runner Jesse Owens, I believe, took gold at the 1934 Olympics. I could have the year off, but Hitler was fucking pissed and he's tweaking out in the stands. And the guy's on fucking meth. Um, and this was covered in a few different biographies. But also, Germany provided meth to a lot of their soldiers. Then this was before meth was really there. I don't believe they were smoking meth. I think it was a pill. But, uh, and before Breaking Bad, Hitler's favorite show. But uh, Hitler was on meth, and they distributed meth to the German soldiers. And that's one of the ways that the German soldiers were able to fight so hard especially during like those harsh Russian winters when they were invading France or Poland, Blitzkrieg, even when they pushed into Russia. It was the meth, baby. Meth wins wars, uh, but only in the beginning. Uh, then when you start to have the withdrawals, you know, don't get high on your own supply. That's what I always used to tell Hitler. Um but yeah, Hitler had a lot of weird things. Also, I read a biography about Hitler, and this is true. He was fucking freaky. Hitler, I swear to God, he liked to be urinated on, and he he ha asked multiple women, including a niece of the Nazi photographer. You can look this up in the Hitler biography and double-check my sources, but I've heard this cross-validated from a few different sources Hitler liked to be defecated on swear to God and like that seems wild like oh really Hitler liked to be pooped on you're you're just making that up for comedic effect but like 
If you think about how far Hitler's mind was outside of normal, you know, human thought, like this guy really deviated from a lot of conventional thinking. Is it really that hard to believe that Hitler liked to be shit on? So anyways, there's this story that the official photographer for the Nazis, his niece started dating Hitler like briefly just seeing him. And one time they were at a convention in a hotel in Berlin. And then afterwards they went up to Hitler's hotel room and Hitler asked her to pee on him. And I think she did so, but then he asked her to defecate on his chest and she refused. And then she ran out of the room like crying and this is true. Four of the women that dated Hit, and I use the word date loosely because it's Hitler wasn't great at holding long term relationships down. Although with the Ava Braun, there seemed to be a love that could never be burned out. Um, for the women that had sexual relations and romantic interests with Hitler, ended up committing suicide. You know, and you got to think in the 1930s, I mean, people would get married after just sometimes kissing. If you kissed a woman, that was grounds for marriage. So things were a lot more conservative and sensitive. So if you get a woman to shit on your chest, she's going to be like, oh, my God, what the fuck is wrong with me? You know, not like now contemporary women, these feminists. I mean, they'll shit wherever I ask um, in my hand, <laughs> on my foot. Um, I like to be peed on. Also, I'll just say, by the way, one time my girlfriend and I were showering, we were in the shower and I was like, come on. Uh, or I was peeing in the shower as Americans often do. That's one of our, you know, basic rights as Americans is to pee in the shower. I believe that's the 18th amendment. And so anyways, she goes, what the fuck are you doing? You're peeing on me. And I go, oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were in the shower, you know, when in Rome. And she got all upset. And I'm like, listen, you can pee on me. And she didn't believe me. But then I realized, I, you know, I was saying it in jest for argument's sake. And then I realized like, oh, wow. Like, I got excited by the idea of being peed on, you know, by an attractive woman. So I lay down in the tub just to prove it. And I was like, come on, pee on me. And she refused to do it. And so then I realized that um, she might not be the one, sadly. Um, you know, but it's interesting about peeing or, uh, you know, the, you can't treat others how you want to be treated. You know, the, the golden rule doesn't apply to golden showers. I guess that's... The moral of the story but you know women they're they're picky they don't you know they're it's hard to find the right the woman that will pee in the right places you know it's it's just as rare as finding true love really um the golden rule of course uh, originally it's argued that it comes from confucius the uh Asian sage, Chinese philosopher, or Epictetus, I believe. Was he a Roman philosopher? Maybe a Stoic philosopher? I'm checking to make sure my camera is still recording. But, uh, God, other sage wisdom about urination. What else we got? Uh, but, yeah, Hitler liked to... So he had an interesting psychosis, psyche psychic uh he was a weird guy but um yeah he really so can you i oh okay here's the psychoanalysis behind the hitler situation though was he had an inferiority complex so when he was asking this woman in the hotel room to defecate on him he was begging her to like slap him and pee on him and basically um he was saying that he wasn't worthy of having regular intercourse with him. And he had this very strange inferiority complex. He's got this weird persona about 
cl- being very clean, like kind of this OCD about germs and absolving the German people about the dirtiness of the Jews. And but then he in private, he's got an inferiority complex where he wants to be defecated on. He wants to be urinated on. But then in public, he's got a superiority complex, the master race. So it's it's interesting that a lot of times what it's interesting that a lot of times the people compensate publicly for what they're authentically feeling internally. I don't know. Strange times we live in, but uh uh more to come more to come on the jews uh as always please support your local jews help them out they're going through a tough time i guess in the news donate to your local jews and uh find a jew near you who could use your help hide them (laughs) if you can if they need hiding like Anne frank um Love Anne Frank, big supporter. Little jealous that she got published at such a young age, but you know what are you gonna do? Uh, one day I'll break into this industry. Um, but uh, all right, I gotta wrap up this episode. I got a show to do tonight. Uh, love you all. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Cancel Joe Nami. Mm-hmm.